So anyways, namaste. Today is Monday, March 16th, 2015. This is your daily Forex trading strategy session by Traders Way Doc, where you can trade Forex, energies, metals, indices, binaries, your way, anyway, at Traders Way with Traders Wayne. <laughs> My name is Wayne McDonald, Chief FF Market Strategist. Today's a Monday. I propose we go through the calendar and look at event risk, plot that out, um, go through the commitment or traders report, and look at the large non-hedging positions by professional institutions. And if there's any time left, do some technical analysis. Sound good? Well, let's get going. Remember, trading and investing is risky, especially with leverage, and therefore not appropriate for, ever, for everyone. Past performance, good or bad, never predicts future results, so always stay small, stay humble, focus on the long term, and never, ever, ever risk money you cannot afford to lose. So let's go through the calendar. Um, big event of the week. Non-farm payrolls, or sorry, non -farm payroll, sorry, FOMC on Wednesday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's it. What are we looking for in that meeting? Hmm. Rate guidance, anything more specific than that? Patience, thank you, Mikey. Right. All right, so you guys know what's going on there. Muy bien. So that's going to be a big deal, and like I said, that's going to be Wednesday. Um, so whether they remove the word patience or not, it's going to be important even if they don't, and I'm going to throw out a guess there. They're not going to remove it. Nothing's going to change, um, but there will be a press conference, and so we'll learn something there. But it's another interesting central banking week. Let's see if I can get the whole kit and caboodle in there. Yeah, that should be it. Okay, Draghi speed of the day. Australian meeting minutes tonight or tomorrow, depending on where you are, right? Also on Wednesday, MPC meeting minutes out of the Bank of England, right? Then OMC, right? And some RBA on Friday. Wow. So... Uh, I don't think the Euro things could be that big of a deal unless they're like kick Greece out. Um, but, you know, um, you know, Aussie, let me double check that. Is that Aussie or Kiwi? I always double check. I'm going to mess it up. Yeah, that's it. But I could see the Southern Cross and the Southern Star. All right. So, you know, right off the bat, let's go odd here. Right? And then British pound. Right? Then USD. Right? And then Aussie, Aussie again. Right? That's just on central banking announcements, press conferences. Um, so we're right. So that's a busy week right then and there. Anything else going on? So right now it's like Aussie pound dollar Aussie. Well, you know, quite a bit of Aussie comparatively, right? Anything else going on that might be important to Aussie? Hmm. 
going to use PMI. Okay. So it could be a decent week. Put that down on the calendar. So quickly just going through it then. Um, Permit zoo. All right. U.S. building permit. All right. Um, CAD manufacturing uh, data. Oh, okay, but I, I think we're on the clue train that the economy is contracting a bit under the pressures of low oil prices. Get it? Got it? No, it's good. The runs are right, which is good. Fine. But, you know, the annual budget, uh, meeting minutes, you know, what, what Carney and the MPC are thinking about, all that's going to be very, very interesting. So that's why I say this stuff here, oh, fine, it's fine, it's news, plot it on the chart, keep the trend going. Um, but, you know, something unusual can happen here. Okay. And then later today, FOMC, again, you know, it's not just their statement. There's a press conference, um, the staff projections. Um, you know, we're going to learn a lot on Wednesday out of, out of the Bank of England and out of the Federal Reserve. Now, I think this is Kiwi GDP. That'll be interesting. Fine. Put it, plot, put it on the calendar. Could be a tr nice scalp that night. Philly Fed. Yeah, that could be all right. That could be all right. Philly Fed's fine. But uh, I'm even more interested in Chinese PMI data. Right? So check it out. You get Chinese PMI data, and then, you know, just, you know, within an hour... Um, you get um, Governor Stevens is at the Reserve Bank of Australia. That could be a nice Asian session. And then German P, uh, PMI, fine, whatever. Uh, and then uh, Canadian retail sales. Yeah, you know, that'll be interesting. And do you think retail sales, month over month and year after year, year over year, do you think they're going to be shockingly good? No. No, so maybe start front running it, you know, a day or two early and see if you can swing into it. Have you ever thought about that? If you have an opinion, then what if you could um put your trade in twenty four hours early, move your stop to break even and hope you can catch it. Sure what I'm talking about? Got a blank spot for you, baby, because I love you, Wayne. All right, let's go to the next. That's the calendar. Should be pretty interesting. I think it'll be a good week. Um, it's a lot of news, but I, it's one after another with you know time in between. So uh, I think it'll be a good trading week. Okay, commitment of traders report. Let's see what the large speculators have been doing. Up, tick, and long. Hmm. This is Euro USD. It's been a while since we've seen an uptick in long. However, there's also been an uptick in short positions. Nice. So trading volume up. The net result here, there are still more positions added to the market than bullish. This was key. Do you remember when Euro USD was moving up? We looked at this, and because of this information here, and the information here, we concluded that 
people were not buying euro they were only taking profit on euro usd short so thus when you were at like one 108 109 you should continue sell 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 euro usd that's what we concluded based on fact and you should be up you know three or four hundred pips the wiser because of this data I mean that's it uh, we looked at this and decided you know we talked about confidence in the trend and that based on large institutional investing that there was no reason whatsoever logically to abandon the current trend even though the, the current trend was retracing there was no evidence whatsoever that it was reversing correct And now, because of this, like I said, you should be three or four hundred pips richer, wiser, better look, taller, skinnier, more interesting to talk to. So thank you, Commitment of Traders Report. All right, so now this is the pig dog, British pound versus the USD. Steady increase in buyers here. This has been on, as you know, this has been, you know, interesting to me. Because it, there, it's been a very long time since we had a buyer. Like, here? When is that? May of last year? So just an uptick. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful. Um, who remembers the plan on this one? Now, we were hoping for the plan to execute at 150, but as you know, history has proven that it didn't happen at 150, but it was a pretty logical area. But what are we waiting for? What is the game changer that might be ahead? IMF, thank you. International Monetary Fund. They're PhDs and MBAs and um, other assorted nerds, bean counters. They're going to release a report. When is that going to happen? Yeah, in the middle of uh, April. And they might just come out and say, blah, 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 you take good. That could be the game changer. That's it. Not enough said. So uh, I was hoping British Pound would, um, would stop at uh, 150 because it was a nice psych level, but it didn't. It was also long-term support as we went over multiple times, but it didn't hold. I, uh, we're, we are tickling a pivot. Does anyone see the pivot? What is it? I'm leaning over. I might have to stand up. Wait. Yeah, monthly S2. So this is also uh, monthly S2 is at, what is it, 147.58. Um, you know, 147.58. Let me move the chart, take a look at that. Got a blank spot for you, baby, because I love you, Wayne. Uh, 147.50, and yeah, it's just right below where we are now. Okay. Now, as far as this short that we set up here, we got pretty close to 750 pips profit. Nice. Hope hope you got them. So, anyways. So we're 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 right on that. Um, it's right in here. Um, monthly support two. Now, if you're not sure what it is, if you're new to pivot points, that's the aggressive target for the month, and it would be extremely un unusual 
using monthly pivot points for price to go below monthly S2. It can, but that's unusual. Another way of saying it is if you stay short, you're taking on additional risk for the extra pips. So you better know it, and you better believe it's worth it. So anyways, um, so maybe it, maybe it has here. It's a little lower than I would like if you remember the gray zone is support going back years. So I think if we dipped a little low, you know, and then kind of flattened out and then kind of walked around till the middle of April and then went up, then it would be like a J-Lo. And I'm okay with that. Definition of J-Lo, big wide bottom. All right, so little action heading up here, but and more people selling line. But nonetheless, what's the logic here? If the market is given reason to be less bearish, let's say, what happens if these guys immediately drop out of the market? And we've seen that it can happen, uh, just recently even. What happens if they all just disappear? Look, look at the difference in trend over that period. There's steadily more and more bulls. Somebody's tiptoeing into the marketplace, don't you stink? So if these guys bail out, Let's say if the guys in the top are speculators and the guys down there are investors, they're in it for the long haul, right? Or one is a fundamental play, one is a technical play. Um, I, I still think it's interesting to, to be watching. Okay, oops. So let's keep an eye on that. But currently it's still down, so I'm still watching key levels of support with great interest. Um, so if I go out weekly and then zoom out past that, okay, this is the area I was telling you about. It goes back years. Um, next plan would be try again down here. At somewhere, what is this? What is this? 43? Well, the, the 618 predicts the 13A2, which is 46, right? That was the 900 pip projection that we had earlier. So, you know, maybe that's it. Maybe we were right up here, right? Maybe we were right down here. It come, it'll, the 618 goes to the 13A2, and then it reverses. That'd be kooky. Well, I've seen stranger things. All right, so now we're looking at pound dog weekly chart, but it's there, dude. It's there. So I, I still, since the monthly S2 is right where we are, so some consolidation good. Um, if you're still a bear and you think it's going to drop down to the 45 to 43 area, then let me show you how to plan that out, okay? Um, Daily chart, maybe? Let's see. Yeah, I'll do it daily. Boop, 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 boop. Okay, then what you do is this. You need to identify your new sezone, as they say in Italy. Hey, Mario. You sezone. Hey, Mario, you got to have a sezone. <laughs> okay, right? All right, so you would be looking for something like this. Right? Okay. Now it's probably pretty close to a 3A2. Let's get a confluence of strategies. Uh, yeah, it's a little high for that, but I'm okay. I, I, you know, that's a retest of 150, right? So up to 150 and drop it like it's hot, drop it like it's hot, drop it like it's hot. Okay. Doop. 
Doop. Okay. That would be that for, for bears. I'd like to see a little more than just buying at a price. Okay. But I'm ready. April 16th, I'm ready for the IMF to help me out. They did it before. I hope they do it again. Remember what Carney is saying. Yes, there's no inflation. But it's not their fault oil prices dropped by 70%. And if it wasn't for that, there would be inflation. And then, you, then he says, um, take a look at uh, job growth and inflation at the wage level. So he's like, it's there, it's not much, and then there's nothing at the, the consumer level, but there could have been if, if the you know, producer level didn't crash because of the oil prices. So if everything kind of normal, normalizes, um, the inflation's there, it's just hidden. Now the thing about that, you got to read between the lines, is Carney... Um, would you call him an, uh, an aggressive central banker or a conservative central banker? I'll give you a hint. When he was in charge of the Bank of Canada, Canada was not in a financial crisis like the rest of the entire world. Conservative. The rest of the world fell into a financial crisis. Canada did not. A couple of years later, you know, five years later, the, the Bank of England hired him out of the Bank of Canada to run the Bank of England. A Canadian for crying out loud. Oh, very auspicious. I mean, just, that's redonkulous. They couldn't find anybody in the United Kingdom to, to run the Bank of England, right? I mean, this guy is sharp. Okay? Right? This guy is sharp. And he's not aggressive. He's conservative. And if he says, look, I get it. No inflation at the producer level. No inflation at the consumer level. I get it. I got it. Right? But it's there anyways. I know it's there. What he's talking about is inflation. So that's, I think there's a lot to learn from that. All right, so let's move. Yen. Who trades yen? Got a blank spot for you, baby, because I wax my legs. Yeah, yeah, a few people, yeah. All right, me too. I like Yen. Wyatt, hi! <laughs> oh, I miss Japan. The uh, cherry blossoms didn't come out on, on my driveway. I have rows and rows of cherry trees, and they all, they're starting to bloom. In about a month, it'll look like I have snow across my yard. So, a good time to go to Japan, huh? Yeah. Where do you go for that? Is it Osaka? Yeah, what happened with the raccoons? You know what? I haven't seen them since. Three of them, though. Yeah, in a few weeks, go to uh, Kyoto. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Oh, White's in Osaka? Cool. Lots of lots to do. Japan makes the best whisk world. M ranked higher than Scottish whiskey. So anyways. Um ba 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 bum bum ba bum Japanese yen. Okay. Increase in short positions, decrease in long positions. <laughs> yeah, boy. 
once again, this was something that we talked about earlier um, when we were back at 118, 119. You know, should we give up the yen trade, but repatriation, you know, fiscal year end, and blah, blah, blah. I mean, I, I, I work with you guys on this for weeks, months, and years, right? To understand this and be prepared for it. And uh, if you can understand and prepare, hopefully you can make money, right? So one of the things we've been looking at is, are people bailing on the yen trade? And we have seen no increase. Okay. What we have seen for a while is a decrease in sellers. And we know we are currently two weeks away from Japanese year, uh, fiscal year end. We're already starting to see, boom, an increase in people selling. That, that up arrow is an increase in short chains. More people are shorting. Okay? And nobody is buying. Net result, the market is bearish and more bearish for two weeks in a row now. Okay? But we're waiting. Still not there, right? But it might be the beginning of something very beautiful. Okay. Aussie, yeah, get up. Crikey, she's a beaut. What's going on here? Anybody buying? Has there been an increase of buyers of the Aussie dollar? Okay. Now remember, these are institutional investors that are making purchases so large, it's required by the government to report them. So what's the sentiment in the market here? Are there hedge funds or corporations or central banks or you know, whatever? You know, are there large buyers of Aussie dollar? No. None. Nothing. Zip, zilch, nada. Okay. Well, what about the same thing in reverse? Are there large institutional investors that are short or shorting, and in particular adding to their short positions? Now, very often, a corporation, for example, will come in and short the futures market to hedge their cash positions. That's what the futures market is designed for, isn't it? You're holding a lot of Aussie dollar, or you own an asset that will pay you a lot of Aussie dollars in the future, but you want to lock in today's price because you think Aussie is going to fall. So therefore, you hedge the cash position by selling, right? So this is cash, 
right? Long the cash and you short the trigger, right? But this report cuts those guys out of the picture. And the reason that can be done is you're taxed differently in everything to be a hedger because you're not in it to make money. So if you make money, you're offset a loss somewhere else. So you're telling the government, don't tax me on this win because it's really just off, offsetting a loss somewhere else. So there, it's a zero game, right? Zero. There's just no, so the government says, "Oh, all right. Well, if you're going to be that way, you need to tell me you're a hedger, and you need to report to the government." And you know, I don't know. It's not like it's like having a license, right? <laughs> you got to prove to them that you're a hedger, and that's what your CFO would do. And you report to the government. All right. Well, we do a lot of foreign exchange trading but we're hedgers okay we don't intend to make money we're trying to make money if we do it's not going to be a lot and maybe next year we'll lose it but you know the name of our game in forex is to just offset our risk so they say we're hedgers don't tax us like we're we're in it for them for profit the government says okay so now they know, what about these large institutional investors that are shorting the Aussie dollar? What are they trying to do? Ching, ching I want to make money. By the way, what does this dollar, this, uh, what does the big S with two lines mean? It means heavy Spanish silver. <laughs> Yeah, that predates the dollar. That's Spanish silver, heavy, thick Spanish silver bullion. That's what that means, that dollar sign. All right, so anyways, um, people are increasing their short positions, or let's say investors or traders are increasing their large positions and that are short the Aussie dollar and they're doing it to turn a profit. Nice. Okay. So here we are at 76. The bottom, though, is 75. We know that because we were told that. It's the only reason why we're there. Um, I was chatting with a reporter at Bloomberg about this about the Aussie dollar and the RBA and Governor Stevens' target at 75, and are they going to lower it and go to the next level? And we are both concerned about data that suggests a housing bubble created by low interest rates in Australia and no real other place to invest your money if you're an Australian. Right, you don't put it in the stock market because that's coming down. Bonds don't pay anything, right? Um, so what do you do with your money? Well, what did they, what did Americans do when Greenspan dropped interest rates to one percent and the stock market crashed by forty percent? What did Americans do with their money? They threw it in the real estate and created a huge bull created by Greenspan. Right? So the RBA is well aware of this. And they don't really say it publicly that much. But if you are crazy enough, like moi, I actually read the um, I actually read the the speeches. You 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 get the text, right? And if you go down to like paragraph 13. You'll see it. There's like, you know, he'll have a paragraph where he'll say a few things, like specifically, you know, we're worried about this, that, and that. And it, it has to the, the the bubble. They understand that, that real estate's already overvalued in Australia, right? It's only gone up for about 15 years straight. 
but now there's nothing else to do but throw all your money into real estate. And they know this and they're concerned about it. They're watching it um, and so on and so forth. But right. So is it going to go lower than 75? Yeah, it certainly can. But I don't know if it's going to be the RBA talking it down. I don't know. Uh, I'd like a little more information because it's just like what we've had in the past where they say it's worth something. So recently they said it was worth 75. So we get to 75. And then now what? The only reason we're at 75 is because the RBA told us it's 75. That's the reason it fell to 85 because the RBA told it was worth 85. So now that we're here, how much lower do they want? And, you know, it's unclear at the moment. Um, I think what we should be watching for is New Zealand. Okay. And if New Zealand cuts interest rates, the correlation between the, the Kiwi dollar and the Aussie dollar might pull the Aussie down, let's say, down to 70, right? From 75 to 70, if they cut. And if they cut, you know, watch dairy prices, for example. Um, which comes out tomorrow, right? The dairy auction comes out tomorrow. Put that on your to-do list. It doesn't get put on the calendar, but we're smarter than that. It's on our mental calendar. Um, another thing that could uh, uh, turn the ship around and and put us up to back to 80, 85 would be um, Chinese stimulus package. Are there any clues? about a stimulus package or some sort of central banking policy to increase money supply in China? Let's see. Premier Li made it clear that the government still has a host of policy tools at its disposal that it wouldn't hesitate to use should economic activity weaken below Beijing's expectation. Oh, snap. Was that like five hours ago that he said that? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and they're already doing it. Adam says, you know, like, I guess it was two weeks ago, right? Adjusted RRR and lowered interest rates. And we did the whole discussion about monetary policy. So, yeah. So we've, we've talked about this till we're blue in our face. But, um, you know, I, I, increase. Like, they're doing stuff, obviously. More of it would be good. But now they're talking about the government getting involved. Okay, who adjusts RRR and interest rates? IR. Oops. I guess I got it that way. That's the People's Bank of China. Now, let's just pretend that's not government run. <laughs> but, you know, um, the government could come out and just say, we're going to spend, you know, a trillion U.S. dollars worth of our currency to stimulate the economy or something. And that would be on top of all of the other stuff. And that would prop up the Aussie. Because eventually uh, that would stabilize commodity prices, right? Which would do what? Create inflation prices in the UK, which would give them the ability to start um, not increasing money supply, but decreasing money supply. So what are some of the ways that, um, like the Fed, for example, we're, we're wondering if they remove patients, okay? Right? Uh, what does that mean? Well, what are the three tools that the Fed could use to tighten monetary supply in the United States of America? How do they do it? What are the three tools? Adjust the rate of the discount window to affect the Fed funds rate. Right? Right? 
federal open market uh, o, o, you know operations OMOs open market operations just the rate change the RRR lots of things that they can do who controls the Fed funds rate Well, the Fed funds rate, that's the actual lending of money between banks. That's the actual interbanking system. That's the one we like to use. Cool. Now, one thing that's very interesting, uh, you know, you just got me on topic here. <clears throat> you have um, historically, let me clear this up. Let, let's get a, a blank chart going. Do I have drawing tools on this sucker? I haven't used it in the room before. Let's see. Whiteboard. Can you guys see a whiteboard? Cool. Okay. So let's say this is the Fed manipulating interest rates over the course of time, right? This is the interest rate. This is time. You always, oops, that's supposed to be a T, but I guess that's the bottom of the chart. All right. Okay. Always have to have a properly labeled chart. Harvard's teaching well. All right. So you got your interest rates over time, and they lower it. Okay. But the Fed funds rate is the rate that banks borrow from each other and traditionally there's a spread between the two how do i change colors with this thing? pencil oh uh, no collaborate export pdf what there must be a way to change colors draw text eraser Really? Oh, I see it. I found it. Yay! Okay, let's make this blue. Okay, the Fed funds rate now is the rate that banks charge each other for overnight loans. Because really, that's where they're supposed to go. The, a central bank, the reason it was created was what if the, the interbank system fails and a bank cannot borrow money? So a central bank was created just simply to answer that question. The central bank is the lender of last resort. So they penalize banks that need to borrow from the Fed funds rate by keeping their rate higher than the Fed funds rate. So let's say typically the Fed funds rate, again, it's the banks, the, the, the fee that banks charge each other making short-term loans, okay? So let's say the dark blue is the actual Fed funds rate. You see how the spread is normal? Let's say it's 1%. And then the Fed did something interesting. Oops. I got to I got to readjust that slightly. Let's get back to that puke green. Oh, the system's really slow. Okay, that's I think that's about puke green. And now now what's happened is the spread between the Fed funds rate and the discount rate has narrowed. So traditionally, what the Fed charges when a bank borrows from the Fed is higher than what banks charge each other. Therefore, only a bank that couldn't borrow from, from the interbanking system would, would want to go to the Fed. And it's a little embarrassing, really, too, right? If you're a banker, if you're J.B. Diamond running J.P. Morgan, and, like, why are you at the Fed? Why are you buying, borrowing from the Fed? Right? So they discourage it by charging more, right? But they still want to be there and be available to the banking system. 
So traditionally, there's um, a spread, the discount rate, right? So let's go this. Let's label it now. The discount rate that the Fed charges. That's a <laughs> that's an R. <laughs> the discount. Uh, okay, the discount rate is traditionally higher than the uh, Fed funds rate. Uh, let's go FF. Okay, those they typically have a spread. Now, currently, in, in our topsy turvy world, currently the spread narrowed. The Fed actually narrowed it. They got to the point where they lowered interest rates all the way and they needed to do something else even beyond that so they narrowed the the discount rate closer to the Fed funds rate. So my my thinking here is the first step in normalization that the Fed's going to do in the near future, let's say in the next 12 months, is raise the discount win, uh, rate at the discount window at the Fed. Okay? And not even do anything else. The Fed funds rate will probably stay the same. The discount window will rise. And that'll be the first normalization to have a normal spread. Because when you look at the historical charts of the of the discount rate um, and the Fed funds rate, you know their lockstep, the spread is exactly the same, exactly the same for the last twenty five years, right? And then all of a sudden, they narrow, and so now we got to normalize that. That's the process of normalization that they're always talking about. Cool, huh? And that's that. All right, so some Aussie, some CAD, some pounds, some dollar. I think it's going to be a nice week. I think we're going to have lots of trading opportunities. Um, some things are near, you know, extremes, like, like I pointed out here on the pound dollar, you know, a monthly reversal pivot could be very, very interesting. Um, you know, USDN, it's caught on a monthly reversal pivot, but it's the conservative one, month four, not monthly R2. But nonetheless, monthly pivot. Um, USD CAD, I believe, is on a monthly pivot. Um, so on and so forth. So interesting levels. Um, I think we need some uh, more information if we're going to break through these key levels. And I think we got it on the calendar. We got lots of central banking stuff. Um, there, it's important information. I think what the market needs right now is to learn about the intentions of these central banks so that we can either continue the trends or, or, or reverse them. More, my gut is telling me that we're going to get information to confirm the existing trends. There's no need to reverse. I'm not even really thinking about reversal of trends until maybe August. You know, like to me, it's way out there. You'll you'll hear a lot of on TV and stuff about all these traders. The it's it's over, it's over. It can't go higher, it can't go lower. That's all nonsense. That's just um, you know people that have um, an emotional liabilities. So, anyways, it's going to be a great trading week. I'm glad you're on my team. Thank you for being clients at uh, TradersWay.com. My name's Wayne McDonald. I'll be here tomorrow, same time, same place, and we'll do lots and lots and lots and lots of technical analysis. Sound good? Hope so. I'll see you tomorrow, eh? Take care of yourself, you hear? Peace on earth, may the pips be with you, may your profits be above average.